Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Press Pass on GNAT TV. I'm Andrew McKeever, the news director here at GNAT TV's News Project, and it's a pleasure, as always, to have you with us today. Also a pleasure to be joined here in the studio by two journalists who are here to tell us a little bit about uh, some of the stories they've been working on and the news that's been happening uh, this month. A real pleasure to welcome back to the studio Jim Therrien, who uh, okay. writes for the Bennington Banner and his work also appears in the Manchester Journal. And also to welcome for the first time Luke Nathan, who is a reporter also with the Banner and the Journal. And uh, Luke, glad to have you with us. Good to be here. Glad to have you too, Jim. It's nice Good to, to have, see you again. Good mm -hmm. to have you back. Uh, well, uh, yeah, a lot's been going on uh, this month. August is usually kind of a relatively slow news month, I guess, but uh, it seems like there's been uh, a little bit more activity underway uh, this month than, uh, than typical, and a lot of it happening down at uh, the southern end of the county in, in Bennington. And, and Jim, get us started here. Um, <clears throat> big story, it seemed to me, uh, down in Bennington this month was uh, the groundbreaking at the Putnam Block yeah. after... Uh, Years of uh, hard work on the part of uh, several individuals down there and uh, some private sector folks and uh, institutions like the Southwestern Vermont Medical Center and Bennington College coming together. Um, ground was formally broken. We had the governor come down for uh, and several other state officials for a, a big event. Um, so that means phase one is now underway, but there's, it's a three-phase project. Uh, right. What happens next? That's the plan. Um, <clears throat> the, I think you come... You, basically get a, a slightly different group. They had the Bennington uh, Redevelopment Group, which was the hospital, Bennington College, and uh, Bank of Bennington, several others, and uh, basic top investors. And now you've got another group probably forming um, with similar, but not entirely the same. You might, they might add some, somewhat drop. I think, uh, I'm not sure about Bennington College, whether they're in this phase or not. Uh, but they're forming, is what I understand, that they're, they're forming the uh, outlines of how they're going to proceed. They have at least some of the, the it's going to be new construction, and they have some of that already, you know, pretty much set in um, what, the way they're going to do that. Other things are still being developed, I think, and they're going to be a lot more... Um, uh, a parking lot, uh, like open space, and and also environmental uh, remediation mm -hmm. done, and um, so that that that's being formed. I guess they um, they'll be doing that as the other work is going along, and it had planned to to start about a year or be going out to bid about a year after the other one, which. Uh, uh, was launched, like you say, last month. That, um, I, I don't know what the schedule is. I think they're still thinking about that. But it's basically new construction, uh, parking lot. They'll have to knock down a gas station. And, uh, oh, and also, and part of this, uh, at the same time, you'll have uh, something going on at Old Castle, which transferred uh, to the... Uh, Old Castle Theater during the uh, closing on the com complicated, very complicated phase one uh, project. So they're working on their fundraising to, to do the roof again and uh, some other changes there. So you've got three historic buildings on the corner, Putnam and all that going on at the same time. Uh, the old courthouse next to it and another one there and then Old Castle. And then Probably right next to that, there, there's at least uh, a good-sized building going there. So some of the players are the same. The hospital is still involved, or healthcare, and um, and then they're planning after that a phase three, which is mostly housing of, of mixed uh, expense. So uh, to see how that goes, but that's phase three, and that's out towards the. Um, Washington Avenue area. Right. So uh, also in Bennington, uh, Luke, we had uh, the return of Max Misch to the uh, headlines. Um, you covered his most recent uh, court appearance. Uh, um, Mr. Misch is uh, someone who uh, has been in the news a lot lately. Uh, he was involved, of course, in the 
um, uh, situation with uh, former Representative Kaya Morris uh, deciding not to run for re-election uh, after she was trolled uh, by him. And he's also been in some other uh, situations involving uh, ownership of guns that apparently he wasn't supposed to have. And uh, he was back in court again last week. and. Uh, what was going on there? Yeah, so Max Mitch was in back in court uh, a week or two ago um, uh, being accused of violating his conditions of release uh, on two more counts, I should say, uh, of violating his conditions of release. Um, he had already been accused of violating his conditions of release. And I should say, too, I guess, the original charges that Max Mish uh, is facing uh, were filed in February. He's accused uh, of two misdemeanors uh, of, of, of possessing um, high-capacity magazines uh, that were made illegal uh, by the state last year um, uh, and, and, and purchasing them in New Hampshire, I think, around December of last year, and then bringing them to, to Vermont. Um, and, and so those were the initial charges filed in February. He was th then later uh, accused uh, of buying a gun at a gun store. His conditions of release had pro prohibited him from doing that uh, in Bennington in March. And then these two most recent violations of his conditions, uh, it's alleged that he contacted his ex-wife uh, in, in July, mm -hmm. and then uh, that he visited a bar in Hoosick Falls uh, this month uh, when his conditions prohibited him uh, from uh, leaving Bennington County uh, without the court's permission. Mm. Um, so that's five misdemeanors in total that he's now facing. Um, he is still, um, <clears throat> he remains um, free uh, without any bail being, he hasn't had to post any bail to, to secure his uh, release. Uh, this has prompted, I think, at least on Facebook, some grumbling about, you know, why why is he allowed to continually, you know, allegedly flout uh, the his conditions of release and not face any sort of uh, punishment? I mean, I guess one thing is like he, you know, he's now facing charges that he'll have to answer for, and that you know could, you know, he could incur some 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 jail time because of them uh, if he were convicted. Uh, but you know what the judge has said, and the AG's office has. You know, continually asked for bail to be set. Mm. I think because it's only a mis these are only misdemeanor charges. I think they're only asking uh, for about two hundred dollars on each of the mm -hmm. uh, on each of the mm -hmm. counts, uh, which you know is sort of a nominal fee, you might say. Um, but nonetheless, they've asked, and in, in response, um, the judge has sided with the defense, who has basically <clears> said, <throat> "Look, he's not he's not a flight risk, and bail isn't meant to be imposed as something punitive. It's meant to ensure uh, the defendant's return to court." Um, and Max Mischer's return turning to court, um, and he, you know, he seems to revel in, in the publicity. Um, so, so that's kind of where things stand. Um, the original charges, I should say, too, um, both mm. the AG's office, which is prosecuting the case, and Max Mish's attorneys have jointly uh, appealed a, de a determination made by the lower court uh, that basically found these that the the statute under which Mish was charged uh, for the for the possession of high capacity magazines, uh, the judge found that those are constitutional. But they are appealing uh, that determination, and I'm trying. Max Mish himself told mm. me that the that the higher court has agreed to hear that that appeal. Um, I'm waiting for a confirmation and maybe some sense of a timeline um, mm. from both parties on both sides. Uh, and I've also reached out to the higher court itself to just <clears throat> be like, can you clarify the the timeline for me? Uh, so I'm still waiting on that, but I would expect um, to see that you know decided sometime in in the future. Is he ever going to wind up going to trial on, on any, any of these or? I, I'd imagine so, you know, uh, you know, but I, you know, appeals can take time, and so I, you know, I, who, it, this may, you know, be a, a rather protracted matter, and you know, in the meantime, he has to continue to abide by the the court imposed uh, right. um, uh, conditions, you know, and. You know, in in the past, you know, he's at least according to prosecutors has has run afoul of them on three uh, occasions. So mm. the, it could it could be a, I don't know um, how they classify this, but. They're actually sometimes this kind of a ruling can be quick, but it's this. It's probably similar to when um, there's a something uh, something about the evidence that uh, is being questioned, and they want some kind of opinion ahead of time before the trial's over to save because he's going to appeal anyway. They, they probably can get a ruling ahead of time, and sometimes these can come faster. It's should this evidence be tossed out? That's that's a normal one. But this is a little bit different, and uh, Mish will not face any charges if 
if the uh, thing is f found to be unconstitutional. The the, mm. the lower court, um, in its in, in, grant, in green lighting this uh, this appeal process, uh, basically acknowledged that uh, you know in his decision the judge had to rely on um, like out of state you know precedents and stuff uh, to be able to say yes this statute is constitutional because there is you know there's not really precedent because it's a new law. Um, so yeah, I mean it's sort of untested terrain. I guess, and so maybe the AG's office basically said, "Well, let's save ourselves the trouble on the back end, and just like mm. let's, 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 like. let's yeah. jointly go along <clears throat> with this appeal, you know, and just have then then we'll know, and then we can prosecute the case." Otherwise, not, you, otherwise uh, you go through a whole trial, and he gets right. convicted if he does, and then right. you got an appeal that that you know just goes on and on. Yeah. But mm. assuming well, that case, assuming yeah. that he has money to keep an appeal going, but there's uh, there was speculation at first that he would have. Uh, pro anti-gun control uh, people s helping him. And I'm not sure if you've heard anything right. like that. Interesting. I, I don't know about that, but you know, I, I do know that you know, from my brief time in court uh, covering uh, Mish already, you know, on one occasion mm -hmm. he wore a, a, a T-shirt that rather crudely um, expressed his displeasure with um, with gun control, gun control in general. Right. Um, <sighs> so I, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me to yeah. see you know to see him you know n notwithstanding that he's you know a white, avowed white nationalist, uh, you know, seeing him gain you know gain some support you know for his yeah. opposition. So he hasn't to, really to been. Gun laws. He's never really been charged with anything to do with um, harassment because every uh, police agency or attorney general said that uh, he hadn't violated um, any laws because of free speech rights. If you remember, the attorney general came down here for a press conference and said he couldn't find any reason. And then right. a little while later, they found that he had bought, or they alleged he bought uh, the large capacity 30, 30 round clips in, um, in New Hampshire after it had already become illegal, illegal in uh, October, I think it was, in uh, Vermont. Right. So, it mm. does. It does carry a um, uh, j possible jail time. Was it <clears throat> up to um, one year, something like that, on each charge? I'd have to look back <clears throat> at the statute. You know, a fine and or jail time. Certainly, <clears throat> I imagine. You know, you know, Mish, who, you know, who has pleaded not guilty to all these charges, is will probably marshal some sort of argument if he hasn't already in court about how, you know, noting mm -hmm. the timing of, 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 of Donovan's press conference and then the subsequent charges on unrelated matters, you know, he'll, he'll probably make a point of highlighting that. Unofficially, they already have. <clears throat> some people have, I think, on mm -hmm. Facebook at least. <laughs> Moving along, uh, Jim, you had a story uh, earlier this week uh, about uh, an opioid treatment uh, facility that was supposed to come to Bennington, as I guess that plan has been shelved now, but uh, there is apparently another entity in town that is stepping up, if that's the right term, to, uh, to handle some of the, uh, you know, the, the many cases of folks who are struggling with opioid addiction. Uh, what's going on with that? It sounds like a, a smaller uh, place that has, uh, that has well, not, a fair, <clears throat> fair amount of uh, business, though. <clears throat> not necessarily smaller. Um this Acadia uh, Healthcare, which has uh, a hub-size um, uh, treatment center in Brattleboro and all over the country, right? I considered by to be possibly the largest uh, addiction treatment um, provider in the country <clears throat> at many locations, and they wanted to put something in Bennington. Uh, the state thought it was a great idea. Some Officials with the, with the state thought that it would be great because it's uh, supposedly, um, and like Dick Sears will tell you, that it's underserved. And he's been trying to, to get, um, yeah. to get more trying service to get here. more support for that. For a lot a of people time. have, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> this was supposed to uh, be able to handle as many patients as you could. It didn't have methadone, but it had um, other uh, outpatient uh medically assisted uh, drugs that could be prescribed, right? So that, uh, they were gonna hire, uh, be able to handle 300 to 500 is what they put in their application. Um, but then it dragged on and on and it was still on the certificate of need uh, website. And finally I said, I, I have to find out what's going on and they um, had dropped it. They had sent mm -hmm. an email and said they were dropping it a couple, of, three or four months ago. Um, so, that, and, and I understand that it was basically because of opposition or 
un, un, uh, unavailability of a, a suitable site. And there may have been uh, people they thought didn't want to work with them on uh, with the site. They, they, they were <clears throat> able to, did the plant founder, the fact they couldn't find the right site for it? Right. They had a couple, I think they had at least one location they definitely wanted, and um, it wasn't working out. And mm -hmm. I think that was one of the things, but they, they didn't cite that in their letter. Uh, they just said they were dropping it, and I just heard uh, otherwise that it was because of they couldn't work with um, with anyone uh, controlling that site, maybe mm -hmm. or whatever, to get to get access to to have it there. <clears throat> so um, then I couldn't get somebody on the same day, so I I, I tried the um, Savita is uh, another group that uh, is in about five or six states and very big in Massachusetts, and they wanted to expand into Vermont. And they had opened on Dewey, Dewey Street uh, last year near the hospital in one of the hospital buildings. Uh, well, I finally got a hold of them, and they, they said that, yes, we've, we've got another site that has now has around 400 people being treated on an outpatient basis, and it's right on Main Street. But you can't, there's hmm. very little uh, notice that it's there, and of course, probably that's good. So they're sort of filling a void there. <clears throat> it might have been. Well, that's what they said. They, they, we, we think we've filled uh, that gap. Uh, although, uh, the people who, um, there's a, a team that um, works on um, addiction and services trying to uh, ensure that they're uh, adequate. Uh, their their goal, I believe, is still to have what is called a hub, and I'm not sure I haven't been able to find out whether they, there's a lot of support for methadone treatment, which is available in um, places like Brattleboro and North Adams, Mass. So maybe they don't want to do that. That requires a daily trip to the, to the mm. center, whereas these other ones, uh, other drugs, you can have uh, up to a week or so uh, prescription, and then there are other drugs that wean off of even that, and and they've had they say they've had a lot of success. They do uh, a lot of drug testing through a laboratory in Chicopee, Mass, that um, is very rapid and does complex um, testing, and so that that goes along with the treatment. And their three month um, testing after three months of treatment, they said I think that seven to nine percent tested positive. The others were negative, so that they also do, of course, counseling. They have caseworkers. They work with UCS, uh, United Counseling, and other and other providers for different aspects of trying to keep uh, somebody uh, on the right track as far as addiction. And most of these are um, opioid addiction, but there is there is um, also service for um, for alcohol. <clears throat> But uh, that's uh, that seems like there's both negative and positive aspects yeah. to that whole story there. Well, certainly uh, it continues to be a big problem. Uh, and certainly, is one that's gotten a lot of attention in the past few years. Right. Uh, certainly, good to see that there is uh, some some help being made available to folks down in our area. Well, there's uh, there help. there have been advocates that, uh, including Fed Up, uh, who's mixed right. up here. Uh, and others that want to get into housing, uh, supportive housing right. and other things right. like that. And th they've brought that up to the town. I don't think any decisions have been made, but I think that select some on the select board at least are supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, that would require some kind of grants, I'm sure. But, oh, yeah. but uh, to, to give people more of a complete wraparound type service. Right. Right, yeah. I remember that idea came up, uh, I think, a couple of years ago, uh, yep. to have, a, have a housing for folks who are you know, uh, struggling with the opioid addiction, and uh, it certainly seemed like a great idea. Um, moving up Route 7 a few miles to Arlington, Luke, you had a group of stories uh, you've done recently uh, about uh, some uh, actions the select board down there has taken. Uh, one of them that struck me as very interesting was the one involving the the Catholic Church that uh, is no longer being used as a church, uh, right next door to the Arlington Inn there. Uh, so, uh, is there some somebody who wants to buy it? 
Well, possibly. Someone did want to buy it, at least. Uh, uh, retired banker um, uh, Roger Cooper had had, a had had the property under contract for a number of months, if not longer. Um, but he, um, in, a, in a newsletter that the local diocese put out a, a few weeks ago, uh, it said that that deal is no more. It was sort of a cryptic, rather short um, uh, little blurb in the newsletter. Um, and I, I, I called the diocese and tried to speak with uh, Father Tom Madison, but I I didn't reach him. I had spoken to him before, but not not since the deal fell through. Uh, and you know, the, the the newsletter said that that Roger Cooper no, was no longer interested in in, in purchasing the property. Um, and this was part of a larger deal. Um, a number of stakeholders in town want to see that vacant church. It's been vacant for a number of years now. Um, Converted into a uh, multi-use community space. Um, this would be the, the the sanctuary space would be a kind of performing arts center. Um, there's a building in the back of the property um, that would be like a fitness center. Uh, there's a another building next to it. The, I guess the rectory would become office space. So they have a pretty complex uh, and rather you know holistic kind of uh, vision for the property but they want to mm -hmm. know they want to figure out before they go further down this road um, whether it's feasible mm -hmm. uh, and so they're aiming to apply uh, for a state planning grant for about sixty thousand dollars uh, to study whether that vision is is financially feasible um, the way they had talked about it at a, at a Roger Cooper uh, of the Arlington area uh, renewal project is one of the people involved in this vision, putting together this vision, uh, and as he described it to the select board recently, um, you know, maybe a non, someone like Roger Cooper, not him obviously anymore, but someone like Roger Cooper might own the property, and then a, one or more nonprofits would essentially operate the space, and it would be some sort of public, uh, you know, maybe a public-private partnership, uh, uh, you know, involved. Um, and Baker has even likened this project, you know, if it were to come to fruition, uh, of having the kind of impact that the Putnam Block project is uh, thought <laughs> This to would be Jim Baker, who the head of the uh, Arlington Area Renewal Project. That's right. That's right. right. What, what, he likened it to, as that for <laughs> well, Arlington, you know. Okay. But it's a long, It's not as far along, you yeah. know, as, as, the, as the Putnam Block project. Right. Um, and <clears throat> presumably it wouldn't cost as much right. money to right. fit it up the way they, they envision. Uh, but nonetheless, so, so, this, so the, the town has had preliminarily greenlit um, the, the stakeholders uh, to be able to basically use the town as a kind of pass through to apply for this grant because the grant can only be given to towns. Uh, so the town would be the kind of custodian of the funds but wouldn't necessarily devote any real resources toward the, this effort. It would basically be the, you know, kind of the third party between the two, uh, b between the state and the stakeholders. Um, but now that there's no buyer, um, you know, that's, that's a, a question is like, well, what if the Cat nothing presumably uh, would prevent the Catholic Church now from you know selling it to someone else. And even at, at a previous meeting, you know Roger Cooper, I mean not Roger Cooper, um, Jim Baker, you know invoked the specter of say, what if a gas station wants to open up on that on that property? You know it's a main thoroughfare. You know probably a lot of traffic. You know what if a big box store? You know what whatever. You know so I think that's the Arlington <laughs> area renewal project's interest is seeing that whatever comes of that space, that it be seen as, you know, uh, something that's beneficial to the town, you know, in, in a more, you know, kind of holistic way than just a gas station or some sort of uh, big box store or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, I wonder what the zoning rules are. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm just, there. Yeah. sure, <laughs> perhaps a use like that isn't even permitted yeah. anyway, but I'm just you know, yeah, throwing yeah, out no, examples absolutely. and hypotheticals. You, you never know what can happen. Well, maybe Earl or Guthrie will come along and... Uh, Right. By the church. No, no. <laughs> so That's um, an older there is going to be a public meeting where the, the, the public will be able to review this grant application uh, before it is sent to the state um, on September 5th. Um, so, to, you know, I haven't seen what's in the application. Yeah. I have some sense of going to these meetings, you know, what is likely to be in it, but that will be a chance for the public to weigh in also. And I guess they're also looking at uh, some plans or possible plans for or rules around solar, uh, where, where people, I guess they're designating certain areas in town uh, where solar 
arrays could could be built. That's right. So this is a process of where you know localities um, under Act 174, which is a couple of years ago, which basically gave localities um, some control over how they where they site these large scale you know renewable energy projects. Um, so the Select Board has now authorized the Arlington Planning Commission uh, to send letters to a, about a dozen or more uh, property owners whose properties the Planning Commission has deemed suitable or potentially suitable for um, solar installations of that type. You know, usually they are the sites that get a lot of sun. <laughs> um, that it doesn't mean that, it, so that these properties would be designated as a kind of preferred status so that if um, developers uh, of solar uh, were to come along and approach these property owners and the property mm -hmm. owners were to say, yes, you know, please install these solar projects uh, uh, on my property, uh, those developers could be entitled for certain financial incentives that they wouldn't otherwise get if they were to try to install on properties not deemed designated by the town. Um, this is a kind of way for towns, again, to sort of steer projects toward places where they want to see them rather than just have projects come in and them be like, have no kind of infrastructure in place. And so that they can prevent, you know, uh, solar projects from being installed in places deemed unsuitable or deemed unsightly or whatever, but, but while still giving, you know, places, you know, not blocking it outright, you know, right. giving them places where they can install. So it'd be sort of like pre-approved pre zones or lots where, you know, you could fast track a project like that because it seems like every time I don't know. Every time, every solar project I think I've ever heard of winds up annoying somebody. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Or right. creates controversy of one kind or another. It's like somebody, uh, whether it's a next door neighbor or, or uh, whoever, goes, hey, wait a minute, not in my backyard. You don't find out until after you filed, usually. But the, uh, so are they, it must be doing an energy, energy plan under, right. under 174. That's right. Because like Bennington has one. And, it, and even with the plan and the designated areas, it's, it's hard to determine sometimes because there are different rules like size, you know, 175 with them, uh, uh, kilowatts. Or, anyway, you can't be over a certain size. Um, Otherwise, it's sort of considered commercial and you have to go in a certain zone. But there are other factors that can come in. It's a pretty complicated thing to develop one of those. That's right. And, and uh, the Bennington County Regional Commission is serving <clears> as a kind of liaison and helping Arlington through this process. And they've helped other towns, you know, as Powell well. Powell has one now. Yeah. Um, so other towns are in various stages of the same process. So you're seeing it play out probably all mm -hmm. over the state. That makes sense to have it sort of pre zoned, as it were. And, uh, you know, understood that, hey, you know, this is this is where they could go. And given the state's ambitious 2050 energy goals, which right. I guess we're not exactly uh, as on, on track as we would probably like uh, to be around all like of it. those, as far as I can tell, uh, that sort of thing is probably going to be happening more frequently. It definitely boomed for about, well, I guess when Schumann was in there, it really... Uh was pretty active, but I think it's slowed down since then, or maybe all the good sites are, right. are already used up. But uh, they, I think a lot of it is emphasis on um, old gravel pits or old, old landfills, right. things like that. Brownfield kind of uh, sites. If you can do that, that's, that's, that's usually uh, welcomed. Yeah. <laughs> or rooftops and smaller ones. Well, we're going to have to leave it there for uh, for this week. Uh, lots of other stories going on, but maybe we'll have you guys back sometime in sure. the very near future and bring us up to date on all of them as well. And uh, just wanted to say thanks to Luke Nathan. Welcome aboard. Thank you. On Press Pass. Uh, Luke is a new reporter with the Bennington Banner and Manchester Journal. Jim Therian, of course, uh, has been around the block for a, a few, while, once few or twice. Times, yeah. And uh, Great to have you both with us today, and uh, great to have both of all of you as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found the show interesting and informative, and we'll see you again the next time. Meanwhile, have a great day.